Today again, Lab, we're having a bonus episode, as always, talking about podcast movement, 2015's the ups, the downs, and the very real issue I want to address, confidence versus arrogance. What podcasters are, podcasters, <laughs> what podcasters are like IRL in real life. More on that in three, two, one. Plato said, know thyself. It's not always easy, but it is necessary. This is Get in the Lab. Welcome back to the lab. My name is Megan, and I run small little experiments to gain big life goals, and then I tell you about it. So thank you for being here. I'm really happy that you're here uh, spending uh, 30 minutes or so with me during this bonus episode. We're going to take a little hiatus on the uh, regular scheduled programming, as I like to call it. Um, and get back on to, you know, you know, the regular episodes and stuff like that. But every now and again, I throw in a little bonus episode action. Okay, so hopefully you enjoy this because we're going to talk about podcast movement and uh, some very important things. It's the ups and the downs and that typical thing. But I, I generally want to discuss today, we'll get into it a little bit, confidence versus arrogance and, and kind of addressing this thing where when you meet <laughs> somebody that you kind of admire in real life, uh, what that actually does to you, uh, you know, kind of like getting that, that image, uh, and that fantasy on the same level, right? So we have the fantasy of what we see people is, uh, see people as online and then we meet them in real life and, and what happens after that. Okay. So we're going to get into that, but today, you know, uh, first I want to give, uh, just a big, big round of applause for Jared and Dan for uh, doing an exceptional job with this conference. I've, I've only been to like three conferences. I'm not like a veteran or a pro with the conference game. Um, I'm still very much new. Uh, we're going to get into <laughs> just my sort of social anxiety in a minute, which I feel many of you lab rats were probably feeling if you went there um, and there was just so many people. So I believe the first podcast movement was about 600 people. And already then I would be like, my mind is blown. But this time they almost doubled in their attendance, about 1100 people go into podcast movement and it was held in Fort Worth, Texas. So there was a little bit of a trip for me being from Orange County. And uh, it was it was really fun because I got to bring along my kid sister and, and she got to meet all my friends and do that thing. Um, and she also got to see a different side of me, which was um, <laughs> the anxious uh, wannabe speaker in me. And I think I kind of believe that every introvert has has a sort of kind of performer star wannabe within them because they see that those those who are extroverted and those who kind of uh you know uh, step into the limelight or step into um talking to others and being extrovert uh, you know make it's easy for them and and we look at that and we go man I wish it was easy for me <laughs> but as an introvert you go okay, I, I do want to be there. I do want to get to there, to that point. And so you put yourself in these positions like speaking or going to the conference with like thousand people and, and just really trying to overcome the fear. And uh, th that was something that I, I dealt with. And, and she got to see that a little bit, how I was very reserved in the beginning because I, you know, as an introvert, I can't, I can't keep putting out energy. I do it here on the show and I really try to bring a performance for you guys as you watch this because I understand uh, that you're investing time within the show and I really appreciate it. And so I try to give everything that I can in this moment when I'm delivering this message. Uh, that way it kind of translates between the mic here and through the camera because you do, you have to give a lot more uh, than, than if we were meeting in real life, I wouldn't talk to you like this. I would talk to you like a normal human being and, and probably a little bit shy. Um, but that was something that she was able to see. And, and uh, as I kind of run down the kind of ups and downs of this, of this, um, of this conference, um, I always want to come back to this, this incredible thing, this human thing, uh, which is something that I talked about in my talk, three ways to add video to your podcast, uh, is this this human need, whether we're introverted or extroverted, established or not established, we all we all do really want to belong, right? We all kind of want to connect with people. And uh, no matter what, no matter how introverted or maybe even tired I am of giving 
this type of energy out to people in in a real life sort of basis because it was exhausting to do that day in and day out wake up go to sleep and and interact you know and try to network and try to build relationships on a human level and not be <laughs> not be weird and awkward and introverted you know um that, that was quite a task uh, but definitely I wanted to do it I wanted to be there because I I feel that that connectedness is just something so powerful. It's so addicting to be around these people. You know, I call them my peeps. It's good to be around your people, to have, to be surrounded by that energy. It does something to you. It's magical. And if you ever get a chance, Lab Rats, in, uh, you haven't been to a conference where all of you are kind of like on the same level, whether that's Comic-Con, VidCon, FinCon that's coming up right now. Um, Veda meetup. Uh, we're going to do a Veda meetup after Veda is over. Just to be surrounded with your people, I think is something very powerful. So let's get into it a little bit more. Let's talk about uh, the ups and downs of the pod of the conference for me. So uh, I was speaking this time, like I said, and I was very, very anxious. I mentioned a little bit about, you know, trying to reserve my energy for the talk for that performance because I knew I was just going to have to really give it my all and do better than I did last time at Podcast San Diego. And that's exactly what I did. Was I better? Yes, I have to say that I was better and I have to start owning those wins and losses but uh, <laughs> for me it's easy to own losses but I need to start owning my wins and and being okay with it and being confident about that and I want to encourage you guys to also remember your wins and to be cool with yourself about celebrating them as I did better this time um, but I, I talked to some people in the audience and some of my friends and they noticed that I was still not feeling it within my heart of hearts and 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 making that confident in myself apparent to the audience and apparent to you to you know to everybody who's seeing what get in the lab is or me uh, just as a person and so I think that's something very important that we'll need to discuss within the show because I, I believe that I'm not the only one who feels uh, kind of I I don't want to be that person who's always self-promoting or look at me I'm very very fearful of that at the same time which is a good fear to have at the same time it's it's not something that I want to be stuck in this this fearful state this this scarcity mindset and there is a difference like I said where we're going to talk about uh, the difference between confidence right confidence in what you do and owning your niche and owning what you do as a content creator in your thing what you're doing versus arrogance which is something that I, I ran into and I keep running into it at these conferences and that's okay because that's, that's just going to happen guys. At first when I was met with arrogance at conferences where I met creators who I almost idolized and I met them in real life they just weren't what I expected. I was really really let down and really just met with Contempt is a strong word, but that that's probably what I, I feel like because they've probably have been approached many, many times and they're like, look, it's just another, you know, so and so trying to, you know, boost up my ego and whatever. And you know what? I try to be as genuine as possible, but I don't know how how genuine a fangirl feels. <laughs> but anyway, um, being that I took the energy, plus I'm an introvert, plus I'm not known. Um, I took the energy and I'm probably speaking for other, you know, other content creators who, who meet uh, people that they look up to. I took the energy to approach this person and, and some others too. And all that they're concerned about is themselves. You know, it's just very, very arrogant, um, came across very dismissive. And this is something I want to just make other content creators aware of whether you're gonna you know if you want to get to that level or not I don't want to be this massive content creator with a huge audience like in the millions that's not my goal that's amazing for other people but I I can see why that that is not scalable and not doable and maybe it results in behaviors like this of being dismissive to other content creators who are hopeful and newbie and whatever um at the same time, it's it's kind of no excuse, you know. You're putting out this content, you're putting yourself in this limelight in, in such a way that you, you know, you want to help people. And then when you're meeting people in real life, you're this 
dick. <laughs> don't be a dick. Okay. Don't be a dick. That's just something I, I want to say straight off to some, you know, content creators. Remember that the people that read your shit and support your shit, you know, they, they do that for a reason is because they believe they believe in you. And when you dismiss them in person, um, I'm not jaded. I'm just saying, you know, like I, res I totally respect these content creators who, who dismissed me or I didn't get a good vibe from them or I got an arrogance vibe from them. I still totally respect them. I'll still share their stuff if I deem it shareable. I'll still like it up. Um, but, you know, it just, I, I don't think that's that's a, uh, an attitude that's worth rewarding. And uh, it's something that I would like to be, you know, in this other camp where it's like, I, I still want to remember where I came from and be humble and grateful for the people who are listening, reading, watching my shit as a content creator. Like, as a content creator, that's it. If you don't have an audience, you're nothing. And the moment that you have contempt for your audience, um, I think you're in big trouble. So please don't be a dick. <laughs> uh, always give thanks to your audience, no matter how big or small it is. I think that's a big deal. Um, and so I, I want to take this time to give a shout out to the content creators who I met in real life who continue to be genuine um, and continue to inspire me and continue to match the persona that they put online and and who you meet in real life. So um, Pat Flynn, very, very big ups. Uh, Sean Stevenson of the Model Health Show, Jamie Tardy from Eventual Millionaire, um, Kimanzi Constable, such a such a huge dude in such a uh, um, in such a way his platform is exploding and still such a cool guy. Jared Easley. Danny Pena and uh, Shannon Hernandez and I'm sure there's very many more there's only a few bad apples in there um, but because those bad apples have such big platforms I think it's worth saying on the show and I think it's worth remembering as content creators as we as we grow our platforms as we grow our audiences and begin to affect more people with our word and our message so please whether you have an audience of one or one million okay one or one one million please be kind and uh, give your audience and your fans uh, more than just an impatient look <laughs> uh, of contempt. And I promise you, I promise you, your business and your brand will last forever. Okay. So that's my little rant on uh, arrogance versus confidence. And speaking of confidence, uh, the reason why um, I, I bring this up is because, you know, it's, it's bad to go to go overboard, right? To be arrogant. That's overboard. But it's also bad to be to be under par, right? To be to be uh, less achieving, to to be not even mediocre. Um, and this is something that I do very well, which is I I under underhand myself and I underappreciate my own efforts. Um, and that's something that is a self limiting belief within myself that um, I'm not good at selling or I'm not a pro or I'm not an expert or I'm not a veteran in what I'm doing and I'm not owning what I am doing. And that's something that was made very clear to me. Thank you so much to my friends, uh, Anthony, Josh, Jeff, Amanda, for being honest with me and, and just giving me some tough love saying, don't, don't do that. <laughs> don't uh, sell yourself short. Don't, you know, pull the rug from out from, from underneath yourself uh, because you are, you are worth it. And that's something that's hard for me to accept and I know that it's probably hard for you to accept as well you know am I am I worth it am I am I going to be seen an expert it's something you know this this self-worth thing um, I think is always going to be a struggle and it's our job as content creators and as uh, you guys listening to the show right now to remind each other that we are worth it you know and it's so hard. We have to let somebody else tell us that we're worth it. And I, I think that's kind of frustrating. It is kind of frustrating to to have to be beaten over the head with this concept of I'm worth it and I'm ready to do certain things within my business and, and within my brand. And I don't because I don't believe in me. And so that's something I want you guys to take away. That was the biggest takeaway for me from the conference, um, to have confidence in who I am and, and to be proud at what I'm doing and to own the space that I'm in. 
and uh, not owning it, not making a move on what I'm doing and kind of cowering behind, you know, uh, yeah, I'm not a, I'm not an expert, but I'm not an expert, but, and that's something that I say all the time. And it's a kind of weak ass way to address, uh, to take responsibility for what you're doing uh, in the space you're in. So be decisive. This is something that I, I say to others and to myself all the time, be decisive, own it take it uh take responsibility own those wins and those losses but especially if you're somebody like me own your wins own your wins okay it's okay to own your wins so i feel refreshed uh almost rebranded that uh going to this conference and being surrounded by my people and getting that tough love that i needed to hear and, and inspiration um hopefully you you guys out there also feel the same way that you're ready to take on this next level uh within your within your business and your brand and your podcast. And I think uh, with conferences, they, they do, they are expensive, but sometimes it takes, we're human. Sometimes it takes a lot of money and a lot of hard lessons and struggling until we finally wake up and say, oh, I need to be doing that. And you know what? That's cool because on the side you get you get all this other cool stuff that happens. Uh, the relationships that you build with people that in life uh, real-time experience with people over a drink, over uh, <laughs> over a uh, mechanical bull ride, um, all that stuff. Uh, it's it's those interactions by themselves that 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 make you uh, catapult into action. And so, hey, I'll take it. Um, <laughs> it was expensive, but it was totally worth it. And uh, I highly encourage you to uh, check out the next podcast movement that's going to be happening in Chicago. Links in the description. Okay, I want to show you something really cool. Now that I've gotten all of my little you know, rants out of the way and, and good shit that I wanted to say during this this bonus episode. But I wanted to show you guys something really cool. And I want to give a big, big, big shout out to Brian Norris. Brian Norris. He is a historian and numismatist. Numaticist? I'm sorry, Brian. Uh, <laughs> I'm totally butchering your profession. But anyway, he collects... Um, old stuff right old stuff like antique stuff and then he sells them for like a shit ton of money so i want to show you something very cool because he was one of the last headshots that i booked uh as a sort of that that podcast movement promotional headshot thingy that i was doing while i was there to kind of help me pay for some things uh for the chip the trip because it was it was expensive but um i want to show these things to you guys and it's it's really very cool um these right here and I'll, I'll probably do a little b-roll of these afterwards but um it was an incredible conversation and and that's the thing you know with the headshot thing it's not just shooting for money and this is something that i've already said in like a instagram post or something um, but i come from a wedding photography background and i kind of fell out of shooting for a while because i just did it so much and and i felt it wasn't my passion but every Every so often shooting comes back into my life and the most important thing that that drew me to weddings and to shooting and photography was the people and the people behind, you know, behind the lens when you're shooting, it's it's not just shooting a face, it's shooting a person with a story, a message, a brand, a future podcast, shout out Brian again, um, and, and there's something that you just cannot replace. And it's just, it's always a cherry on top, a bonus, bonus episode to when I'm shooting, uh, you know, new people is that they have stories. And he gave these to me as a gift because I, I, uh, you know, I gave him more than what was expected in, in our little headshot shoot. And he also gave me a history lesson behind each one of these notes. They're called notes, these bills. And the amazing thing is that this is during the time of World War II when the Japanese had occupied the Philippines. Because some for some reason, my, my ethnicity always comes up. People think I was like five people during podcast movement thought I was Hawaiian, but I was, I'm Filipino. And uh, <laughs> my ethnicity came up and I said, oh, I'm Filipino. And Brian said, hey, you're Filipino. You'll enjoy this little history lesson. And I, I really did, Brian. I, and I really appreciate that you took the time to explain that to me. And I could tell that you were incredibly passionate about it. I'm a secret history buff as well. I've always enjoyed it. I think I get that from my dad. Um, 
But uh, I love this because he, he was explaining these bills. And the most important thing is it's got, you know, it says Japanese government. It says one peso. It has Japanese writing on it, ca- Japanese characters. And it's printed with U.S. plates, plates created by the U.S. And that's why it kind of looks like our, our U.S. dollar. Um, but most importantly, really, really cool nod is that there is a monument here. Uh, that is the monument of the greatest, most you know, recognized rebel of the Philippines of those 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 uh, Philippine rebels, and they were able to put it on this money that was re- you know that was uh, basically demanded by the Japanese government as a little a little f you <laughs> to the Japanese who didn't know what that meant, saying you haven't conquered us yet, you haven't completely conquered us, uh, and so I think that's a really great nod to just you know my culture and my background, and I don't know crap about the Philippines most of the time, and so to have this and to have it come from such such a person uh, in such a way uh, means means so much to me. So thank you, Brian. I wanted to thank you officially on the show, and and I've been telling everybody, <laughs> I've been telling everybody. So I can't wait for your show to launch i will share it away okay another thing i want to give a shout out to all of these people who gave me their cards who approached me after my talk or ran into me in some way uh, or i knew them already so i want to take this time to thank you uh amy J. so i remember i remember you you were talking and we were shooting a veda during this time and i almost got you in my veda um but shout out to you amy um smart millennial oh this guy uh so he was showing me like a matrix video podcasting setup he sat in my video podcasting talk and he showed me his setup and it was literally like the matrix so that that's dope man um nina babel you uh were talking about uh starting off a new a new channel and trying to get that right so hit me up and we'll talk we'll talk that stuff um oh you got brian um Harry from Podcast Junkies, what's up, man? You're always on my radar, always doing cool things, always being suave. Hustle and heart with Darius. Um, you know, uh, you came up, you came up after me during the talk. That was really cool. Um, you had a video podcast. You were doing the three camera setup. I remember that. And uh, way to hustle, way to do the three camera setup. I don't do that. That's just too much. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Stuart Mackey, thanks for coming up, man. I, I really appreciate it um, that you had three channels and you were you were wanting to consolidate. We'll talk about that pretty soon. Um, and this is something that you could do, guys. Once you go to a conference or you go to a little network meetup or whatever, like make notes on their business cards because if you're like me, you won't remember shit afterward, okay? <laughs> uh, Brian Fitton, um, you know, you gave me this card. And I couldn't remember, but I want to give you a shout out anyway. I couldn't remember what we were talking about, but I'm going to give you a shout out anyway. Um, and of course, my friend, my very, very good friend, Russell Lalaker. Uh, we had a good time, didn't we? We had a very good time. Check out the upsell. It's all about adding more heart to your business. That's what we do over here, right? Or at least that's what we did do in seasons one and seasons two. Check those out. Um, James, James Kinson. Actually, uh, somebody had referred James to me to to get headshots. And he he turned out um, this was my first headshot of the day. And we had a lot of uh, cool things to conversate about um, and really cool guy. Very, very cool guy. Works for works for IBM. That's cool. Um, Jessica Kupferman. I interviewed her a long time ago when I only had an audio show. I only had an audio show. I interviewed her such a long time ago. I've watched her, um, you know, have conversations about struggling to get to get pregnant and then finally getting pregnant and then having her baby and and just such a beautiful human being and took amazing, amazing photos. Um And I think that's it. That's all the cards I got. If I'm forgetting to uh, give you a shout out, you know who you are. You're you already know you're on my you're on my radar. Um, But we went to uh, a shout out to Papacitos Cantino who hit me up on Twitter. That was cool, man. Uh, Very, very cool. So those were the biggest lessons. Those are the ups and downs of my podcast movement. Uh, experience. I was really just really, really enthralled with it. Um, but it was exhausting. It was like three, four days of just, you know, doing Texas style. At one point, it got to like 150 degrees. It was crazy. It was craziness. And um, I'll be creating a sort of vlog type, maybe highlight video, maybe you'll see clips of it during this this episode, of course. Um, but it was a great time. It was a great time. And I highly encourage you to 
to not go to dot, not just, you know, podcast movement, but to go to events, like go to functions and things where, where your people are. And it, and it makes such a big difference to, uh, how you feel about yourself uh, and what you're doing, especially if it's against the grain, what we're doing is kind of against the grain, slowly podcasting and, and doing shit online is becoming more mainstream and more accepted. Um, but no matter if it was accepted or not, you need to have people in your corner. You do. It's just something really important, something I really believe in. Um, and even in my position now uh, versus when I first started, I forget that. I forget that people are in my corner and I forget um, that that I have a, a resource of people, real live people to mastermind and ask their opinion and ask for help. Um, and they're just there waiting for you to ask. Okay, so... The introvert in me is is running out of steam. I really appreciate you spending the time to to watch this bonus episode. And now that we are f- an official video podcast, I want to say a whoop whoop and a high five to myself because I finally committed to doing that when I it took me so long to do it. And uh, um, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, guys, um, that's going to do it for this episode, this bonus episode. We will see you next time on the regular scheduled programming uh, back at episode number 10 here on Get in the Lab. So once again, my name is Megan reminding you to get in the lab. We'll see you next time. Peace. Oh, um, what about you? Did you go to Podcast Movement? Let me know in the comments. What were your what was your absolute favorite, favorite speaker? Mine? I got to say Jordan Harbinger's talk um, really just with honest, raw, good shit, good shit. Uh, I loved it. Um, Leave it in the comments. Let me know who was your favorite speaker. We'll see you.